Hey guys, Tyrant here bringing you the December Balance Preview version 1.6 update. In this video I'm going to be covering the general changes and also the changes to previous commanders that were changed. So not the new USF and OKW changes. So let's get stuck in. Demo charge being changed again. Detection radius from 7 to 13 can no longer be diffused. So yeah, see if your engineer is running up and trying to defuse them automatically and then getting blown up that's not going to happen anymore so you're just going to have to attack them with uh, attack simple that is a uh, 13 range though that's like a decent chunk of range seven range is like i would guess if you were watching your squad run on to, run onto a point you would spot the demo if you hit stop like Pretty much as soon as you saw it, you wouldn't get hurt by the demo. But 13 range, now you, I feel like you've got a little bit of time to react as well. So yeah, they're giving you a bit more leeway there. 13 range is a decent chunk of range. Hold fire. We are changing the hold fire button for all units in the game for consistency and accessibility. So they're changing them to be all on the same hotkey, so that's nice. Light mines. We are improving the cost efficiency of light mines, but we are increasing the planting time to something substantial to offset this. So cost decrease from 15 to 10. Stun duration from 5 to 8. That's a big stun. Bigger stun. It's not a stun anymore, right? It's a slow. Uh, okay, full squad plant time increased from 5 to 25 seconds. There's a big nerf to the plant time. 25 seconds for 8... Uh. That seems like too long. Maybe 20 seconds would be more appropriate. It seems a little bit too long for their effect. Soviets, ZIS-3, we are adjusting Barrage to match its new price. So yeah, they decrease its costs a lot. And I said that it seemed like really oh, just too good for its costs. So now they're decreasing the number of shells that it fires from 6 to 4. So uh, that's a change. Uh, probably justified and I think it'll be still be useful with this barrage to like help you break up a uh, position so yeah it'll still be uh, useful it just won't be too cheap IS2 population cost increased from 19 to 20 yeah, the IS2 got a couple small buffs so I think this is bringing it more in line with the uh, Tiger now since it received a few buffs and you know you always got to think about this in terms of medium tanks would I rather have two T-34 76s or an IS-2 well it's quite situational right but probably the IS-2 so it should probably cost the same as two T-34s pop cap adjustments Ambulance pop cap from 4 to 2. They, I think that's a good change. Pack house to pop cap from 11 to 9. That's also a good change. It was just, it was just way too, too much pop. 50 cal pop cap from 5 to 7. Also a good change. 5 population for 50 cal is insane. 50 cal is so good. Quite hard to access by a lieutenant here, but very good. So these are good changes. Good changes. Okay, USF Captain and Major. We find that swapping smoke grenades from riflemen to re echelon makes it too restrictive for the faction to fully benefit from the grenade upgrade. Thus, to increase the number of potential smoke grenade holders, we are also allowing the USF Captain and Major to carry smoke grenades. So I think they did a poll on this on the official forums. What do you think should have smoke? I think putting it back to rifle was actually the uh, winning choice, 
by a very very narrow margin over officers getting smoke as well all officers getting smoke so it looks like they're going to try that one out and then they're changing the hockey to better mesh with the being more consistent across units so that's good Sherman we are reducing the extremes in performance for Sherman HE shell to improve consistency and reliability HE shells now ignore terrain HE shell AOE distance changed to 0 0.75 1 1.5 2.25 okay I think this is supposed to be from this to 0 0.5 1.253 so it looks like they're trying to give this the uh, same or similar treatment to the flak pans are making it ignore terrain try and make it more consistent the the problem is I've used the the change flak pans a couple times and it's been kind of shit honestly I kind of would have preferred the old flak pans are so hopefully uh, they're not going to make the H.C. E. Sherman too ineffective here. Because, yeah, getting getting caught up by a train is obviously a problem. But sometimes, you know, if you drive point blank on top of a squad, you want a good meaty shell to just wipe them out. If you find yourself in that situation where you can, where it's safe to drive up to a squad, you want to get some uh, a good payoff for that taking that risk anyway so it looks like they're changing the far so it's going to hit like a wider area but the near is going to be smaller so like a smaller kill zone in the middle but we'll be hitting units more on the outside as well and on the very outside edge it's going to 0.15 so units on the outside edge will be taking 15% damage instead of 5% damage so more consistent like a smaller kill zone but a more consistent damage across the rest of the AOE so I look forward to trying that one out Sherman Easy 8 to make the Easy 8 less effective at wiping squads on the move we have made the following change scatter from 1 to 1.35 that's a bit sad I tried the uh, I tried the Easy Eight against the new OKW Panzer IV, and I thought it was a pretty fair fight, honestly. So it's a bit of a, a bit of a shame to see the Easy Eight getting a nerf because you do, after all, have to select a commander to get this. I, I just hope they don't make it worse than the Panzer. Okay, where you pants are for. P forty seven slash typhoon rockets. The following changes intended to make rocket plane attacks more consistently accurate, especially versus stationary targets. Rocket origin point from five slash five to three point five slash minus three point five fixed consistency. So hopefully this means the rockets that are supposed to target tanks don't just wildly miss even if the tank is stationary I think the classic example was one of Romeo's videos where there are three passes of P-47s trying to target a uh, Panzer IV and I, I don't think it took like almost any damage at all like less than quarter damage from three passes of the P-47 so hopefully this fixes that somewhat because P-47s in the current state are basically only, only kind of useful against uh, heavier tanks, ones with larger target sizes. Okay, OKW Rakittenwerfer. Sight and range bonuses have been removed from VET-4 and VET-5. Other bonuses remain. So what are some of the bonuses? Speed and reload okay so it looks like they're trying to uh, continue their nerfing of VIT 4 and VIT 5 to be uh, less effective 
MG34, we found that the MG34 struggled at achieving veterancy at a sufficient rate and generally underperforming versus units behind cover. To alleviate these problems, we have made the following changes. Damage increased from 2 to 3. So it's not a really uh, big, or well, 50% damage increase, but the MG34 did almost no damage previously, so that's probably fine. Pop, pack in, pop cap increased from five to six I suppose it's I think yeah I think the uh, MG42 does four so it's just like a slightly uh, scaled down MG42 cost increase from 230 to 250 vet4 received accuracy bonus reduced from 0.8 to 0.95 so another nerf to vet4 and vet5 trying to scale down the effectiveness of VET4 and VET5 it's continuing and VET5 accuracy bonus reduced from 1.15 to 1.08 so yeah they, they talked about vet, achieving veteracy at a sufficient rate so veteracy is in a large part depending on the amount of damage you dish out so the energy 34 dishing out 50% more damage means it's going to vet up a lot more quickly so it's definitely going to uh, work. And yeah, yeah, it's all right. It's, yeah, good changes. A lot of people were complaining about the MG34, so they've done something about it, and they seem quite reasonable, quite reasonable changes, because the MG34 suppression is actually pretty reasonable. I think it's, yeah, pretty similar to the MG42 uh, in terms of suppressing power, but it's just in terms of uh, damage, it was far below. On to the 251 flak half track. We found that the unit generally has a difficult time reaching its key veterancy 2 level, which bestows mobility to the unit. To assist with this, vet requirements are being reduced. So, vet requirements reduced by. looks like about 20%. Oh, whoa. Vet 5 is coming down a long way. Look at that. It's a huge drop, VET 5. So 251 is going to VET up more quickly, that's alright. I think part of the reason why people don't use the 251 is not because it's bad, it's because the looks are so strong. And I think penals not getting uh, sat sticky satchels right from the start, having to upgrade their PTRS is also going to make the 251 a bit more viable so and I, I enjoy using 251 flak half track so I'm happy about that change King Tiger given the high lethality of the King Tiger's main gun we found that the squad wiping capabilities of this unit made it generally overperform versus late game infantry and its tank guns to compensate for this we are reducing the main guns accuracy versus non vehicle units well that sounds good because the King Tiger is like a laser. It's like boom, perfect accuracy shot. 240 damage sh shell annihilates your infantry in one hit. And I suppose if they're nerfing the crocodile, it makes sense to nerf the King Tiger at the same time. So uh, let's see what they changed. Angle scatter increased from 4 to 7.5. Oh, that's a big, big nerf. That's almost twice the amount of scatter in that category. Distance scatter max increased from 4 to 5.7. Scatter offset decreased. Not sure what that does. Pop cap increased from 21 to 23. So remember we saw the IS-2 earlier was going up to 20. So this is going to be three more expensive than the IS-2. Like I'm, I'm certainly happy about this. Though changing the scatter probably also affects if the King Tiger hits your tank if it doesn't roll a hit through the accuracy mechanism right but yeah I'm happy I'm happy to see it scatter a bit more and uh, not sure about the pop cap no I mean it's too pop cap it doesn't really matter too much and it's certainly worth at least probably two more than the IS-2 so why not make it three 
Universal Carrier for the British. We are improving the performance and reliability of the Universal Carrier to give the British faction early and reliable access to anti-garrison capabilities. These changes also intend to offset the other changes made to UK's early game. So they're talking about the nerfed Tommies. I imagine, but also maybe uh, the nerfed Royal Engineers. The British have received some nerfs. <laughs> yeah, so they're making the use of carry a little bit better. Now, oh, now benefits from shared veterancy, so I think a few half-tracks have this at the moment. So they, if they're in combat next to other squads, they share veterancy. It's pretty self-explanatory. Wasp cost reduced from 90 to 70 so it's really risky going for the wasp even though when you go for it you get like a slight health bonus you know as soon as the 222 hits the field or the looks hits the field they generally just annihilate it and the wasp comes like kind of a bit late so uh yeah i don't think anyone's gonna complain about that change AC, we would like to experiment with giving the British faction reliable access to snare enemy vehicles, okay, to help offset their weakened early game. Tread shot ability available from Vet Zero now fires one shot that slows enemy vehicles. From Vet Zero, one shot. Vet 1 restores tread shot to its original set state, fires two shots, second shot immobilizes. Mm. Have to think about this change. So the Stuart gets shell shock, which blinds, doesn't stun or slow anymore. T70 doesn't get any survivability stuff anymore hey you see still a smoke remember so now it's got smoke and a snare 222 also has nothing but then again the British you don't have Fausts but if, if they ever want to give British more access to snares this is something they're gonna to have to remove again but now we'll see how it goes And once again trying to strengthen their weakened early game. For assembly we found that the cost of medic of the medic upgrade was too expensive on top of the already significant costs of the assembly. So they're removing the 50 manpower cost to upgrade. So in its current cost it'll be what 50 more than uh, building a medic bunker as Ossia, so that's that's alright. 50 more is pretty cheap. bug fixes and quality of life and also you know if you build your forward assembly a bit forward of your base but still within range so that the medics can run back to your retreat point in your base to heal then you can get a bit of forward reinforcement going as you exit your base kind of like eastern front armies do when you build your tech structures out of your base i think it'll work <laughs> sometimes we track all these changes adjusted salvage values of some wrecks that were yielding too many resources okay there's just friendly fire disparity with respect to certain weapons friendly fire generally now causes 25 percent damage so maybe this is going to affect the walking stuka maybe stern tiger i've had to guess but i'm not sure because yeah they would do a, like a hundred percent or maybe more and some some things were doing like five percent or something i'm pretty sure some piece of i think the calliope was doing super low amount maybe though but i think i heard i think i remember that being changed earlier on in this patch anyway 25 percent more more general now for friendly fire that's cool reverted usf ticking ticking progress bar fix so i think they wanted to show the officer in the top right hand side of the screen but that's Oh, it looks like they can't get that to work without causing other issues. Soviet capture mode hotkey changed from C to X. 
All right. I guess that's uh, secure mode on tanks. Probably is. So there are changes there. Not a big list. I think I hear that the uh, patch is being released, or the the changes have to be finalised next week. So obviously they they don't want to implement a huge huge list of general changes when they have to uh, finalise the changes next week. So they're just trying to fine tune things at this stage now for the uh, general changes. So on to uh, the commander changes for the uh, non-Western Army. So I suppose British or Western Front as well. I don't know. Anyway, British commanders, General Vanguard officer, to bring the heroic charge abilities value better in line with its intended performance and cost, we made the following changes. Yeah, I think I commented several times that I don't understand why the Vanguard's heroic charge is being unchanged when on me is receiving so many nerfs. So they're finally doing something about it. Heroic charge now shares ability with cooldown with Gammon Bomb. That's actually a huge nerf. Heroic charge ability received accuracy bonus change from 75% to 20%. So this was always insane. 75% received accuracy bonus when you activated it. It was so nutty. That was definitely what needed to be changed. I'm happy to see that. Cost increased from 15 to 30 I don't know if that's necessary now that you can't share cooldown with Gamma Bomb. I don't think people are going to be spamming it too much. But I suppose... Hmm, oh, this 30 seems a bit high still. Because how? What are the what do the Austria ones have? I think the the new ones on the artillery officer or whatever it is. And the change commanders, I think they are about 20, so maybe it should be about 20 for uh, parity across factions. Anyway, the officer has the same target size as his followers. Okay, small change. If the player already has an officer, the logistics glider will ferry a commando squad instead. So yeah, so if you already got an officer on the field, but you want some more commandos, maybe your glider got destroyed. If you call on a glider, you won't get another officer, you get commandos. So it's uh, probably a good change as well. I'm trying to make it more standard so, you know, other factions when you call on an officer, you only get one officer, you can't call on another one, so it's a good change. Infiltration commandos. To prevent infiltration commando squads from being overly efficient at wiping squads when spawning out of ambient buildings, we are lowering the initial squad member count on spawn. This change will allow the target a better chance to flee and also make poorly planned infiltration missions riskier. Oh, okay. Now spawn is three men. I, I read that and I was like, oh my god, this unit's going to be terrible. Can now reinforce up to five men. Yeah, I mean... I, I never really liked the infiltration commandos being four men. People end up doing weird things like trying to stick brands on them to try and get the brand mandos. But yeah, remember infiltration commandos, you can't throw their grenades straight out anymore. The ability is on cooldown. So that it already received uh, a bit of a nerf there. Now it was three men. It makes me... I don't know if this is really that necessary, though. I do like the change that they can reinforce up to five men, though. I do like that change. But, I mean, if you compare this to Falschimjäger, right? I think Falschimjäger, probably just as powerful wiping squads as infiltration commandos with their firepower from their guns. Anyway cost from 440 to 400 it might still be a bit high how much do you want to pay for your three man squad to spawn in enemy territory it seems a little bit high right I expect this more to be around 350 maybe the cost of like overs because you know you're going to have to spend whatever amount it is reinforcing them those two men so you got to add that on to the cost as well 
Well, you can even check that. How much do uh, commandos cost to reinforce? Reinforcement cost 35, so you got to tack 70 on. So you're essentially paying 470 for commandos that can spawn. And what's the change glider? I think the revised commando glider is like 390 or something. Yeah, 390. So you're paying 470, you're paying like 80 more manpower. To spawn in enemy territory, but then you don't get the glider to reinforce from. I don't, I think they should decrease the cost slightly, even slightly more. Uh, where were we? British commanders. Here we are. Anyway, tank hunters infantry section. We find the passive tank detection ability available to. The squad overperforms for or an already powerful squad. Detection is now non-passive ability and costs 25 munitions to activate. I don't even know. I don't think I ever used their detection ability, honestly. But maybe this is making it more in line with what you get from Soviet tank detection, like I demonstrated in my tank hunter video Royal Engineer Regiment repair vehicle and stand fast now available separately at each emplacement slash vehicle so they're buffing this again due to modding tool constraints the player must manually click the ability once to unlock it for all affected units So I guess when you have the ability on your like commander loadout along the middle of the screen, you're going to have to click it once before you can use it on your units because of the modding tool constraints. It's not a big deal. And that, that makes the vehicle repair way better than the Soviet one. Just way better. You can use it on multiple targets. It gives you smoke. It doesn't cost you mun munitions whilst it's active. It seems way better to me, right? It seems way better. Anyway, command vehicle aura radius increased from 30 to 40. Okay, so they decided the command vehicle aura needed a slight buff. It's. Uh, I didn't really test that too much. So so many games you can play. For Mother Russia, to offset the reduction in performance, we are reducing the cost of the ability to match similar abilities. Yeah, okay, that's good. They've nerfed the shit out of For Mother Russia, so it's good to see it's getting a cost reduction. I secretly hope that they will change the KV one as well, but uh, that's probably too much for this patch. Hit the dirt. Hit the dirt is being adjusted to provide minor defense against explosive weapons due to the lack of mobility oh now bundled with conscript assault package so this opens it up on quite a few more commanders right like uh, reserve army so what what are they gonna get what what else are those Miners that have both hit the dirt and conscript assault package gonna get. There was only like maybe one or two commanders that had them both in one package. Oh well, that makes it. Th oh man, no, I, I do like myself some PPSH conscripts. Now they're gonna get hit the dirt as well. It's point dam point nine damage reduction. So. I suppose it kind of makes sense if you're lying on the ground and the explosions near you maybe less shrapnel will, will hit you so you'll take less damage or something and the received accuracy change 
sorry, instead of getting 25% bonus, they're getting what, 17% bonus? 16% bonus? Interesting. Conscript PPSH accuracy changes reverted. So which accuracy, they received two accuracy changes, but if they're going all the way back to how they were before this patching started, oh, oh, I'm gonna be cooking up some spicy PPSH conscript strategies. PPSH conscripts were really good. They would keep, yeah, they were, they were like, yeah, they were good. So they'll be really good. Now they're going to have hit the dirt. Man, they're going to be good. Rapid description. They reduced duration. Oh. I suppose we reduced the duration on rapid description. Oh my god, this is terrible English. Will make the ability more of a tactical choice. Oh, the reduced duration on rapid description will make the ability more of a tactical choice. In addition, Due to the performance changes to conscripts, we felt this ability overperforms. So, reduced duration from 2 minutes to 60 seconds. So, using rapid conscription, sometimes, because I used to use this a lot, sometimes I would activate it midway in a fight. And maybe I'd only drop 4 models during that fight, and the opponent would go, okay, well, they're back activated rapid conscription I'll try and I'll just retreat I was already in a bad position anyway but then you don't quite get a uh, free conscript squad the 60 seconds isn't that long if they retreat by the time they healed up and push back onto the field it's probably going to be over so rapid conscription is going to take some planning to use really good planning to use it's a big that's a big nerf That's a, yeah, that's a really big nerf to rapid conscription. Mm. <laughs> uh, oh, I'm sad about that. Uh, yeah. 60 seconds seems just a little bit short, but oh well. Vehicle crew repair. Oh, it was too long. At two minutes was too long. I'm not going to dispute that. But may maybe I would have it at 75 seconds. Okay, vehicle crew repair. No longer drains munitions income by 50% per tank. Oh, well, there we go. I was talking about how the British one's going to be way better, but apparently not. It costs increase from 30 to 35. So I think the British one costs 40, but gives you smoke. So if you smoke for five munitions. But that's a pretty big uh, buff to vehicle crew repair, honestly. Tank Hunter Tactics. Our initial testing has found that while the commander lacks strong measures to draw opponents in to take advantage of the commander's ambush abilities in order to receive... Oh. Okay, our initial testing has found that while the commander lacks strong measures to draw opponents in... Okay, this while should not be here. Initial testing has found that the commander lacks strong measures to draw opponents in to take advantage of the commander's ambush capabilities. In order to resolve this, we are adding the ML20 howitzer to the commander. AT ambush and tank ambush commander abilities have been merged into a single ability. Salvage kits replaced by the ML20. So do they, they just don't get salvage kits at all anymore. Well, I did a demonstration on salvage kits and it gave you shit all. So that's not really a gloss at all, honestly. Email 20 is pretty spicy, though. Email 20 is going to be a real problem. It could be a real problem in 1v1s against this commander. It could. It could really be a big problem. Tank ambush. Tanks no longer hull down. Bush props are now invisible. Oh, are now visible if and only 
the tank is visible. So I demonstrate this. So the bushes won't be visible when uh, the tank's camouflage. So that was a dead giveaway. Tank's no longer held down though. So I guess that means like the animation where they dropped into the ground doesn't happen anymore. Now only assault guns can rotate while ambushing. That's probably fair enough. Fix an issue where tank ambush was still yielding tanks extra range and sight unintended. Hotkey changes from X to C. Okay, so tank ambush being tweaked slightly. And good good thing that the camouflage will be a bit less obvious now. Conscript anti-tank package cost reduced from 80 to 75. That's a pretty minor change. Detection ability cost reduced from 30 to 15. Cooldown of 60 seconds. I don't think it really needed a cost reduction. I suppose in this commander you kind of want to save your munitions up for the bombing run. So maybe that's why they want to reduce its cost. But I think the detection it had is probably worth 30 munitions. Guard rifle combined arms tactics to improve the commander's competitiveness and to provide a unit that can absorb hits for both the infantry and armor we have added the KV-1 tank. So this is what I was asking, what are they going to add now that they've merged, hit the dirt and uh, conscript assault package, they're adding the KV-1 and that's it, they're just adding the KV-1 which I earlier said that I hoped that they were going to change so it's quite, I feel like it's quite likely this commander will become the new meta commander. Because this is still a call on tank unaffected by tech. Even though it's not the strongest tank, comes in reason, like kind of early, at a timing where only if you have like a slight lead on your opponent, they're slightly behind on fuel, this will come in a good minute before they get their first tank so that's unfortunate oh KV-1 oh I should have kept reading we find the KV-1 is underperforming for its cost by locking the unit to the Soviet tier 4 building oh look at this we are preventing the unit from being overused as a call-in while making it available earlier for those who fast tick oh this is so good this is so good health increase from 800 to 960 buildable from the mechanized armor company so it's getting 160 health bone bonus so one shot more from most tanks remember the kv1 has the highest rear armor of any heavy tank in the game so just keep that in mind it's slow as shit so it's easy to flank it but I think it's got 145 rear armor. We might as well check. We might as well not spread misinformation in this video. So even medium tanks shooting at its rear armor are going to have a, a bit of a hard time. Rear armor, 165, even higher than I thought. 165 rear armor. It's the highest of any tank in the game. And almost comparable to a lot of medium tanks frontal armor so definitely going to be worth building in some situations especially if you can build one of this and it's fighting against a panzer 4 maybe like the okw panzer 4 which is also more heavily armored this might be a better choice than uh, a t-34 especially now the t-34 is uh 10 more fuel from our commanders, general, relief infantry, and remember the KV-1 shoots faster than the uh, T-34 as well. It's like a faster shot on its main gun. So yeah, okay. From our commanders, general, relief infantry, the ability is adjusted due to performance of the Austrian squad. Yeah, I raised this issue. 
thought it was going to be too strong. It's getting the similar treatment to rapid conscription. Oh, now requires five deaths per new squad up from four. That's actually going to be re quite hard to trigger, I think. I would have preferred to leave it at four and uh, limit it to two squads only. Like conscripts is limited to two squads. Because the, the first activation of Relief Infantry is sometimes hard to get four model losses as Ossia, because you know they got the four man squads. But once you have a couple of squads of Ostrub and you activate Relief Infantry again, because they're six model squads and they die quite easily, you can then just like zombie Strupen, just millions of Ostrupen. So this, yeah, this is not. I would prefer this lock to just two squads. And leave it at four with the 60 second timer. Light artillery barrage. Given its adjusted cost, we find the likelihood of light artillery barrage destroying houses is still too high. I thought it looked like an absolute piece of shit against houses. I don't know what what their testing was like, but my testing it looked like it wasn't going to do shit. Damage first non-vehicles and non-infantry further reduced from 50 to 70 67 percent i was yeah that's a surprising change we find that the commander ability is overperforming versus buildings and stationary uh, non-vehicle targets so this is like if you have infantry next to the tank that the stuclo says what anti-tank strafe is targeting it will usually annihilate them so they're reducing it by a lot Probably still enough to do damage, especially against infantry, but shouldn't just annihilate them. So that's a good change. And I hope that they actually go back and change uh, the close air support commander's anti tank strafe, make it a bit better, but implement this change against uh, non vehicle targets. Because yeah, Stu oh, close air support commander is now trash because of all the changes they made to it a long time ago. But yeah, another another change for another day. Jaeger infantry doctrine. Jaeger officer sight range increased from 35 to 42, so that's standard uh, infantry sight range to 42. So I imagine that's probably similar to pioneers sight range now. Smoke and rifle grenades. Now on shared cooldown as originally intended. Ambush camouflage. And yeah, I tested the egg officer. It didn't seem to be that good. So it doesn't really matter if it receives a buff. Like in terms of combat capabilities, it just didn't seem that strong, especially because it's coming in with a you know a veterancy disadvantage. So I don't I don't mind it receiving a sight range buff. Ambush camouflage, we found we find the ambush camouflage bonus plus fifty percent accuracy is now too easy to trigger, especially in the late game where craters are abundant. Yeah, okay. Nevertheless, we believe that the changes to stealth and the addition of sprint already make this commander ability highly worthwhile. Accuracy bonus now requires the squad out of combat for ten seconds to trigger and must also be a mobile while firing. Those seem like perfectly reasonable changes, honestly. I'm surprised that that this wasn't the case in the first place. Ten seconds out of combat being more like snipers. It should probably already have been the case straight away. So the, yeah, good change again. Good good changes. We're getting through some good changes here. Artillery officer, we are making the officer less reliant on his abilities to perform their intended combat role. It's confusingly worded. To prevent the officer from becoming from become too powerful, <laughs> we are preventing them from benefiting from the coordinated fire aura. Jeez. It's, it's definitely a non English speaker who wrote this. Received accuracy at vet zero from one to zero point nine one. 
So coming out of the gate will be slightly more powerful. And this is the one with the uh, officer and the four SMG models, I believe. Coordinated fire ability no longer benefits the officer. Fixed multiple issues with Victor target. Now works even if the officer is dead and spawns flares properly. Yeah, I felt this squad wasn't particularly strong, similar to the Jaeger officer. I feel like now with the point nine one, maybe we'll be able to fight uh, riflemen a bit more effectively instead of just losing to them outright. Ostrupen. We find that the early game of the Ostrupen doctrine is generally too overbearing for most players, especially in light of the other changes to the doctrine. To reduce this early game pressure and the scaling of off troop and squads with picked up weapons, we are making the following changes. Max slots limited to 1, so we won't be able to upgrade LMG 42 and pick up a bar or whatever. So that's alright, similar, similar to uh, conscripts in this respect. We are also 6 man squads you know, with anti tank grenades, kind of similar roles, off troop and conscripts in a lot of ways. Cooldown between successive Ostrupen squads increased from 12 to 35. So I tested, I, had, I played quite a few games against Shadowara with me playing as Ostrupen against uh, US forces and uh, I found it to be very strong. So now instead of the build being Ostrupen, 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 MG42, it will probably be Ostrupen, MG42, Ostrupen, Ostrupen because of this uh, cooldown change. So it's, it's not a major change, but it will stop you from flooding Ostrupen onto the field straight away, securing a massive amount of uh, map control immediately. But you're still calling the Ostru first Ostrupen squad really quickly, and uh, still have a head start on a lot of different factions. Supply drop. Resources gained from supply drop reduced to... 25 munitions, 10 fuel. I feel like the supply drop, you don't even need munitions on this commander, but you do need the fuel. So I, uh, I know that they kind of need the two crates to, uh, to like contain both the support weapons you get from that commander ability but I mean if they put two fuel crates I'd be a lot happier because <laughs> yeah it's Ostrupen you know you, at one point playing Ostrupen this was uh, you know before I ticked to battle phase 3 and before I got to 12 CPs I think I had f nearly 400 munitions in one, one game of testing it was like 350 mu munitions so unless you're really making a concentrated effort to spam uh, mines and stuff, you uh, do tend to float quite low munitions with this commander. So yeah, you don't really need the munitions, but you do need the fuel to uh, help rush out your medium tank. So yeah, those are the changes, and I uh, will be covering the Western Front Army commander changes in a separate video. But uh, overall, things are looking pretty good for this change, you know. Not a huge list of changes and fine-tuning changes because, as I mentioned, they, I believe that, that I read they need to change, finalize these changes next week, so they don't want to make anything too radical. But I feel, yeah, I feel like, oh, yeah, I feel like the commandos are probably a bit expensive. Maybe should be a little bit cheaper. Yeah, and the tank under sections also have a very long anti tank grenade. I don't know. Anyway, thanks for watching and uh, stay tuned for the commander changes video.